Good morning, and welcome to Crossroads United Methodist Church. God is good? All the time. We started our Lenten Bible studies last week on Sundays. Uh, at 9.30 is the men's study, and then uh, an adult study on the same topic at 11 o'clock. It's called What the Bible Says About the Cross. It's a, a part video and part discussion. And so we hope that you will join us. Renee is also teaching the same class on Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. So we hope that you will join us. Also to let you know, you've noticed that the COVID numbers have gone down. We are in the yellow. Well, right now, actually, we're back in the orange. Um, but church, United Methodist churches are starting to open up for worship. Our council decided that because there'll be so much excitement and there'll be an influx of especially students going back to school five days a week, that we're going to wait just a little bit uh, to make sure that we're not closed and then open, closed and then open. So we are looking forward to gathering together as a congregation on April 4th, which is Easter Sunday. So mark your calendars and keep doing your parts of wearing your mask and social distancing and washing your hands and hopefully, prayerfully, we will be able to gather then. I'm really looking forward to it. If there are no other announcements, let us worship together. call to worship. People of God, where do you put your trust? Where do we find wholeness and meaning? We are the sons and daughters of Abraham and Sarah. We trust in God, who neither slumbers nor sleeps. Our lives are a gift from God, who loves us. By the grace of God, we are born anew each day. God loves the world in the gift of Jesus Christ. Through faith and in Christ, we receive eternal life. Now, thinking out of the box with Pastor Janice.
Okay. What is this called? I know it's some kind of cable for video. For audio, you have to know which one plugs into which. Because if you mess them up, then if you're trying to record or you're trying to program, so a video comes onto your screen, if you don't have the plugs in the right place, even though they're color coded, sometimes they don't work. But if you have them in the right place, then you get the results. So I think my question for you is, how do we plug into not only God, but into each other? Um, some people say, you know, um, the more evangelical Christians are saying, the, the most important question to them is, are you saved? You know, we have to talk about Jesus. We have to talk about um, uh, that personal relationship and so that people will go to heaven. Uh, other people are saying, no, no, no. Uh, we need to show the way first through uh, compassion, uh, through, through listening or through helping them, building homes, having clean drinking water. Um, those kinds of things, providing health care. And the truth of the matter is, we need to be aware of our audience. Sometimes just going up to a person and saying, do you know Jesus as your personal savior? That could be really offensive. It could take a person aback and put them on the defensive. But when you get to know someone and then maybe ask, or if they ask you, what does God mean to you? Or how come you're always so happy? Or I sense a peace about you. Where does that come from? And so it requires plugging in on our part, listening, observing where people are, um, I think, and uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, judging our audience, reading our audience, reading the faces, to see which, which message would be the most effective. Yes, as Christians, we want to share the love of God through Jesus Christ. But with different people, sometimes if we say, bless you in the name of Jesus, and the person is hungry, perhaps we need to provide food first and get to know that person, um, to provide for the physical needs first, and to say, if given the opportunity, I do this because I love God and loved God loved me because Jesus saved me. Christianity is the only religion that has a personal relationship in the name of Jesus. No other religion has that personal touch of salvation. And that's what makes Christianity unique. It doesn't make us superior, however, but it does make us special. So when we do share about the love of God to other people, let's make sure that we're plugged in with the right colors, in the right, uh, in the right connection, so that when we share the love of God through Jesus, the other person may be open and receptive to receiving those words of grace. Amen.
we come to that time in our service where we remember not only those in our church community, but in the larger community in the world as well. I understand that Ron Lewis is having a very difficult time and he's not allowed visitors. So please keep him in your prayers. Uh, Janie, I believe, is visiting her son in Florida. And so we continue, we ask for uh, prayers for her and him as well. Uh, good news that, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, Robbins. Randy, thank you. I was going to say Leroy, and I knew that wasn't right. Randy Robbins um, is doing much better and is, I think, well on his way to recovery. Uh, Bill Sargent's service is um, was yesterday. Yes, that's right. And so um, we remember him and uh, his family as well. Let us pray. In trust and confidence, we call on your name, Almighty God, eager to know you more fully and serve you more faithfully. We have heard your amazing promises given to our ancestors in the faith. We seek your word for us in our day, for we want to grow strong in our faith as our ancestors did in theirs. As they gave you glory and praise, we gather to do the same as they passed on their faith to new generations. We seek to teach and live in such a way that our children and their children will be drawn to minister into your name. And in this time of a pandemic and also its healing, we praise you, O oh God, for another vaccine that has been approved and that can soon be distributed to our nation and into the world. We ask that we may continue in that healing and that we may once again be able to embrace family and friends. It's been too long, oh God. Not everybody is into hugs, but that physical contact is so vitally important to our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Those hugs, those embraces, we long to do that again. And so we thank you for the distribution of the vaccine. We ask that it may continue to go smoothly in spite of the weather, in spite of setbacks. There is light at the end of the tunnel and we thank you so much for that. We pray for our world and the strife um, the war, the anguish, the conflicts throughout. We ask, O oh God, that we may come to know your peace, not as we might call simply the absence of war, but we look for that day of reconciliation, that day of hope, when we all recognize each other as human beings not as slave or freed or subjected to another's oppression. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue to lift our hearts and our, open our eyes to the preciousness of all your creation in all its variety of forms, in all of its colors, in all its glory. And we pray all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 23, verse 32 and verses 39 through 43. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. One of the criminals, hanging beside him, scoffed, So you're the Messiah, aren't you? Prove it by saving yourself and us, too, while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Thus ends our scripture reading. So there are several questions that I have today, one of which uh, I think we'll get to is about why this one thief who was being crucified, when did he come to know Jesus to give this incredible testimony um, there on the cross? But first, first question is, why do you think Jesus associated with sinners when the priests and the scribes did not? Any well, the short response? answer of that is all of the uh, rules that the the uh, uh, priests and scribes had to follow. Uh, the example is the Good Samaritan that they wanted to walk by. They weren't supposed to associate with sinners because it would make them unclean. Right. And so they put the status before the human being. Yes. They, they put the rules before the human being. Um any other reasons why the priests and scribes wouldn't associate with sinners, you think? Or was that basically it? Well, I mean, the the people that the priests and the scribes would see are the people like them. That's, you know, was something about birds of a feather. Flock and, together. Yeah. And it was just that, oh, well, we're better than they are. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, throughout Jesus' ministry, he associated with the untouchables. And I had never really noticed until now that even in the end of his life, he's associating with those that were scorned by the religious elite. And so then comes the next question. How, how did this thief... How did he hear about Jesus? What turned him into a believer? Can you imagine what the circumstances might have been? I would say it is Jesus's demeanor um, as he is going to the cross and that he is, um, you know, he's already, he's asking for forgiveness for those. They do not know what they do. He's, it just, it's all of, who Jesus is as he comes to the cross. It's that testimony that his actions are displaying that would lead him. And I'm sure that the they've heard rumblings and they've been hearing rumors, you know, and, and maybe the maybe the thief has already been kind of, you know, kind of wondering about this guy. And then they show up, you know, at the same at the same hillside together, you know. <laughs> I mean, kind of um and I would just say, too, that, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had no reason to reach out to the untouchables. They didn't, they, they didn't get salvation. They, they, it didn't do any good to them to reach out to those untouchables and bring them closer to God. That didn't get them any glory. Whereas Jesus was trying to reach out because he was evangelizing. He was trying to bring all of us into, the, into paradise, and the Pharisees didn't care. Okay. What do you think turned, or um, Adam Hamilton suggests in his questions, um, would the crowd's taunts have supplied the thief with the information he needed to be safe? I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the thief himself to be transformed from a thief into wanting to be saved or wanting to be a follower of Jesus. Well, putting 
the crucifixion context, don't forget that almost everybody in Jerusalem were familiar with or involved with the triumphal entry. All of that coming prior to the crucifixion, I mean, almost all of Jerusalem knew about Jesus and that many hailed him the king. So the I'm sure the thief had heard that. He would have had to have been in some other city not to have heard it. Right. I can kind of imagine him as the um, crowds gathered, you know, on um, Palm Sunday to welcome yeah. Jesus. You know, I can, I can imagine him pickpocketing. <laughs> <laughs> among, among the crowds, <coughs> and, you yep. know, he's pick, picking pockets. And he's hearing these rumbles about Jesus and then he's caught. And he's immediately convicted. I don't know if that's what actually happened, but that's just kind of kind of the image I got just now with you mm -hmm. saying that. Any other thoughts? Well, I've always been struck with the idea of the two thieves um, presenting both sides of the coin, or mm -hmm. in another context, the yin and the yang, or whatever, the good and the bad, the black and the white. Mm -hmm. You know, one thief is saying, you know, well, if you're the son of God, you know, climb down from the cross. Uh, and the other one's saying, you know, uh, don't you get it that, you know, he's the savior, et cetera. Um, it's it also, quite, it quite the contrast between right. believing right. and not believing. It also occurs to me that it's never too late. Oh, yeah, it's never too late. And as much as some people may not want to think, well, this guy who robbed me blind or this criminal who murdered my son or this person who did this thing of violence, um, are you telling me that they have a chance to, you know, be with God, go to heaven, or as Jesus says, you will be with me in paradise? That might be, seem hard to swallow. And yet this passage is telling us it's possible. Any reactions to that? Yeah. I think here, you know, Jesus is, is, is promising an after an afterlife to us. Uh, you know, in John's gospel, Jesus meets Mary and Martha after Lazarus, uh, and he raises Lazarus from the dead, and he and he tells Mary, uh, you know, those who believe in me. Even though they die, yet thou shall they live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. So this is this is a promise that 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 Jesus offers, and it doesn't matter whether we make church and the Christian faith and believing in Jesus a lifelong experience, which is much more fruitful and 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 abundant in living, or in the last hours of your life salvation is this is is offered to to everyone right right and it's it's sometimes out of our control especially if we've been a victim of this person you know but um who are we to judge i guess and so you've kind of answered this question but you know jesus says today you will be with me in paradise and as we heard earlier God banished Adam and Eve from paradise way back when, and now the gates to paradise have been open, reopened. So what? how do you imagine paradise? How do you imagine what, what comes to us after our physical bodies die? I don't mind staying the rest of eternity up at Redfish Lake. So that's, <laughs> that's enough of me. I like that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Might not like the winters, but, you know. Well, you know, in the winters, you know, it transforms into the Bahamas. And then ah, in, in okay. the summers, it goes back to redfish like I guess. You know, but par paradise, like, uh, I remember when Ken and I were in China, uh, the second time adopting our second daughter, and Kylie was with us. We went, uh, of course, to the Forbidden Palace, um, the Forbidden City. And then we got a tour of the summer palace. And in the back, there was a garden made of lake rock. And it was really, really pretty. Didn't have the animals or a menagerie. Um, 
but it was it was absolutely beautiful and i think you know multiply that times however many times if you know if that's what paradise is is, is basking in the beauty and the wonderment of creation but also to me it's being in the presence of God and what can be more more like paradise than that but what what's your what's your um, vision of paradise I was just gonna say that it is the absence of strife where we don't have here on earth we're always striving against each other or you know try against some sort of an ideal or whatever and when we're in paradise and we're resting there with God it, it it's just we can let all of that go and so that we can enjoy and we can savor that love and that beauty that we're we often overlook on earth because we're too busy being busy mm. and fighting with each other and being angry that someone doesn't agree the same way we do right or like la your experience last week of someone charging at you mm -hmm. over something so minor yep yeah yeah Dennis, what about you? Um, very similar to Cindy's, except the word I was going to use was serenity, just a feeling of serenity and being surrounded with that that serenity. Ken, any other thoughts besides Redfish Lake? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so Jesus is talking about even at this very late time, this thief will be joining in paradise. What groups today, as hard as that may be to imagine, what groups today do you think might be the equivalent of the sinners and the tax collectors and the thieves to whom Jesus ministered? Uh, everyone who doesn't agree with me. Because <laughs> it's all about Cindy. It is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cindy, that was almost my answer. I was going to say everybody else but me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm well, here. You have we have the narcissist narcissistic uh, let panel, but um, that's but, right. But it it is. I mean, it's everyone that we other, it, you, and we other people who aren't like us or don't think like us or don't look like us. We other those people, and 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 so there's a lot of them. And I, to, maybe I'm um, beating on a dead horse, but I think of all the protesters at the Capitol. They're certainly not like us. Or maybe some people in the congregation agree with them and don't agree with us. But we all have that opportunity to join into paradise if we choose. So how... I, we need to start wrapping this up, but my, my question is, what do you think would happen if you began a ministry to the others? If you were to reach out, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, isn't it? You'd rather just have them be other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cindy's squirming. <laughs> well, you know, I, my, my, rea my thought is, is that I probably would benefit more than they would because I would actually have to... I would, in order to be successful in that kind of, in a ministry to the others, you would have to turn away from, you You would have to give up that barrier that makes them other. And right. that probably improves you or me more than it maybe benefits them. Well, and I think what I hear you saying is that suddenly we are putting the person before the issue. Ken, we just saw something on TV about a group of um Trump supporters in this in Kentucky, I think, met with a group of Biden supporters in New Hampshire or something. I can't remember where, but they got together and they talked and they discovered that they had more in common than they did differences. And that to me was a really uplifting story. Um, and uh, you know, when we stop. When we start to look at people as human beings, as creations of God, instead of the issues, I think most of us will find that true. 
that, I think that's the first step in reconciliation, in walking together in paradise and seeing people for people. Any last thoughts? We need to wrap this up. Ken, do you have any last thoughts? No, we're good to go. Yep. Okay. Dennis? Yep, that's good. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us in this time together. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that the gates of paradise are again open, not just to us and those that believe like we like like us, but to those whom with whom we may have disagreements. And perhaps we will be very surprised by who else is in paradise with us, assuming that we get there as well. Keep our hearts open, mindful that your reign in heaven is also here on earth as we seek to reach out to each other in love and unity. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who want to save their life will lose it. But those who give their lives to Jesus Christ and the gospel will be saved. We are invited to give all that we have and all we are to the realization of God's will among us. So the portion that we give as an offering to our church is given for him. And that portion will be today.
Let us pray. Glorious God, we dedicate these gifts as an expression of our faith. You alone know how much we give and how much we hold back. You know the extent of the trust and the depth of our commitment. May this act of giving draw us closer to you and extend a blessing to all who are helped through our sharing. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is 298, verses 3 and 4. When I survey the wondrous cross. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. Apologies, we forgot to tell you we were meeting early.